Even as a non-binary person myself, very few of my characters, and I have over 250 of them, are either non-binary or identify as queer. Most of my characters are either straight male or straight female. A lot of people don't bother with backstory. They Like, for instance, they play a barbarian just because they know they can rage and get the strength bonus. But again, like you said, why are you raging? Where is that rage coming from? Bird out of her native environment trying to make it in the city where she, you know, she barely understands the concept of doors. Welcome to Characters Without Stories, a TTRPG podcast about the roads not yet traveled. I'm Celeste, and you can call me Star. If you play tabletop role-playing games, you probably have some back pocket characters, characters who are just waiting for the right story. Every episode, I'll bring in a friend to tell me about their character and their approach to creating characters. This episode, I'm joined by Jay. Jay and I met on TikTok, where Jay goes by the username AllThatJazz22. It is a weird and wonderful thing that we are able to meet people from all over the world that share our love of TTRPG games. And I'm so excited to be talking to someone that I met on social media. Oh, me too. I mean, I remember the days when you if you didn't find that nerdy kid at school who maybe was wearing a a Dungeons and Dragons t-shirt or something like that, or Megadeth, or, you know, was talking about Monty Python, you, you felt you were completely alone. And now we can just like, Hashtag Monty Python, and the world will find you. Jay is the creator of Better Backstories, which is a set of cards that help you build a player character. And I am going to give you a chance to plug your projects at the end. But if you wanted to start with telling us a little bit about yourself. My name is Jay. My real name is James, but I go by Jay. I identify as a transgender, non-binary femizenter, uh, which means I have male and female parts, but I look, I dress feminine all the time even though my voice doesn't allow for it. But I have completed my transition, and I'm happy with who I am now. I'm 47. I grew up in Alaska for 20 years. Actually, North Pole, Alaska, small town in the middle of the state. And yes, I know Santa Claus personally. Then I joined the Navy as a broadcast journalist for 20 years. I served overseas in Japan, Iceland, Spain, and aboard uh, some ships. Then I retired in Maryland. And I worked as a teacher at the broadcast school for the military, where I learned. And now I am an English teacher in inner city Baltimore. Wow, interesting. Tell me, Jay, who are you bringing to the table today? I am bringing Quirr, the (laughs) Burberian. The best way to imagine her is she is a thick, puffin-based aracocra. Being from Alaska, I've seen puffins. And I was thinking, oh, I want to do like a, a, a nice, strong girl barbarian. And puffins are kind of puffy. They're, they're thick. <laughs> and I gave the idea to an artist friend of mine, Blas Barros. He does most of my art and his stuff is fantastic. His shading is to die for. And I said, female, thick, aerocrocra, puffin based. And he gave me some fantastic art with a, a, mass, a nice, massive belt and a huge axe. And she's gorgeous. And I used better backstories to develop her backstory from there. But she was originally based on a pun. Barbarian. Was the pun the spark? Was that the thing that first made you start this character? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, again, just hearing the word burb, and then I just put burb and barbarian together. And then I just said, okay, well, who do I want to make? And I just thought strong female bird character. And in D&D, you've got the air cocro, which are bird people. And I just thought puffin would be a, a good, uh, you don't see it. People always think, I think air cocros are typically based on like hawks and, and eagles, but I mean, think of an ostrich aracocra or a kiwi aracocra or a sparrow aracocra. You know, I think they could make the aracocra race small or even tiny and yeah. uh, get some really interesting songbirds or parrots. What game system would you be playing Quir in? Quir is based in uh, D&D. I used to do a thing for Better Backstories called NPC of the Week, 
where I would take one of my existing characters and beef up their backstory and then actually create a, an actual like D&D looking profile with a stat block, saving throws, attacks, the whole schmear. And then a nice detailed backstory, including three potential adventure hooks if anybody wanted to slip them into their story. And they're still out there on my Twitter feed. I am sure that whatever DM you ever play this character with is going to appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Nice to have the hook. It's the best way to implement a character into a non-existing campaign. And again, people are free to modify and adjust as necessary. I say that every D&D game, every role-playing game out there is just a variant. It's, a, it's an alternate reality of whatever core reality there may or may not be. Mm -hmm. Is this typical of your approach to character building? Are you starting with wordplay? Do you usually use your deck to build backstories? Typically now, yes, just because I took the brainstorming part of my brain and put it into this deck of 80 cards. But sometimes I'll, I'll have preform ideas that will come to me. I had a character once who I just wanted him to have a barnyard animal as his companion, you know, rather than something more traditional. And that morphed into uh, an artificer with a uh, pet rooster. But the cards, I've, I, I rely on the cards pretty heavily nowadays. It, it's really freeing not to have to, oh, okay, how am I going to make this person so different from myself? Because I found that a lot of people, when they're first creating characters, they just base it on themselves or they base it off of something they saw. Oh, this guy was raised on a desert planet and given a, a magic sword. Oh, that sounds familiar. Right. <laughs> Which is a fine way to start. But I love brainstorming. I love coming up with new ideas and taking characters in completely different directions and, and playing off type like half orc wizard who's actually smart. Why do you think they became a wizard or vice versa? A smart barbarian. Why don't you give me kind of a physical description of Quirr? Quirr is uh, about six feet tall. She's very built young lady. She has a mop of brown hair, kind of her crest is kind of like this brown, not quite dreadlocks, but just kind of thick. She has black wings. Most of her body is black, except for the white around her eyes and cheeks, and then a strip of white down her chest. She's wearing leather armor and a metal pauldron on her left arm. She carries a, uh, a massive battle axe that has a, a long curved blade. She has specialized footing that wraps around her clawed feet so that her talons are still exposed. So we already know that she is a barbarian. Is she starting on a level one or you, did you build a higher level character? I built her at level one. I build most of my characters at level one. As, a, as an NPC, I think I... I beefed her up a little bit, uh, you know, but she's got the standard reckless attack. And as a bonus action, she can move her speed towards a hostile creature she can see. So she's got a couple of little bonuses. Would you say that she's straight? Would you say that she is a lesbian? Do you have a sexuality that you've chosen? Left to be decided. You know, that's kind of the thing with a lot of my characters is just you got to play them. Really figure that particular part out. Even as a non-binary person myself, very few of my characters, and I have over 250 of them, are either non-binary or identify as queer. Most of my characters are either straight male or straight female. Interesting. Uh, why do you think that is? I think it's just because it's where I came from. I lived 40 years as a, as a straight white male and, you know, I've only been queer transgender for the last five, six years. And I think it's just easier. I think that's, that's why people identify as they identify because it's path of least resistance. I find male at birth, I guess I'll do this whole male thing. And that's, that's where I was for a really long time, even though I, I knew since I was in middle school that I wanted something different. And it just took mm -hmm. me many, many years and took a while for society to get to the point where I could live my truth because I couldn't live like this in the 90s. I, I would have had to live in a commune in the middle of Kansas or something. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of younger people don't realize how much things have changed very recently. Yeah, and we've lived through it. Does Quir have a voice? Again, because I never played her, I haven't really gotten into the voice, but I see her as kind of Bridget Nielsen, a, a little bit deeper, but still sensuous. Mm -hmm. Or even Grace Jones. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Classic 80s warrior women. Yeah, I love how they're like tough, but also so stylish and so charismatic. Very much, indeed. Uh, let's talk a little bit about her backstory, her background. Well, I actually already have it written up, and I'll just read right through it here. Sure, yeah. So Quirr grew up in her tribe in a sheltered community among the mountains and glaciers of the north. Life was hard, and was hard to find joy amid the gray wasteland. She was the first child her parents had born after several failed attempts. Her mother was devoutly religious and considered Quirr something of a miracle. 
Her parents made a decent living hunting for otters and walrus in order to make clothes, blankets, and tools. Her grandfather was the mayor of their ramshackle town, and though he did well to look after his people, he was quiet and reserved. Quir's mother, admittedly, knew very little about where her father had come from and how he'd been raised. He was always wary of strangers, often asking others to gather details about the newcomers for him before ever meeting them himself. Another slice of joy entered her family when Quir's brother was born. She was very protective of him and did everything she could to help out her mother as he slowly began to grow. A couple of years later, when Quir was eight years old, a sick stranger entered the village. Initially, clerics took care of the visitor, but soon they became sick themselves. The plague spread rapidly and few recovered. Grandfather shut himself indoors as soon as word of the illness reached him. People eventually began abandoning the town, but Quir's family tried to close themselves off and prevent infection. However, her father became sick and passed away, so her mother decided that Quir and her brother would try to escape the plague. Sadly, her brother got sick and died while they were traveling, leaving her with a lingering sense of anger and resentment. Later, both Quir and her mother also got sick. Luckily, they both recovered, but remained weak for nearly a year. Quir exercised regularly to build up her strength and endurance in an effort to stave off any future infections or illness. Her mother found work as an isolated hide tanner and dye specialist in a new city to the south. Seen as refugees and outsiders, they struggled for many years until the plague ended and Quir's mother could find better work and make a name for herself as a local seamstress. At 15, Quir entered seminary and devoted herself to serenata. Her sensibilities lent themselves more towards combat than healing, and she worked hard to enhance her strength and skill with a great axe. She learned of an Arakokra paladin named Ekeg, and she imagined becoming a divine warrior herself. However, her rough personality and deep-seated anger issues led some to call her a barbarian, a term she does not quite appreciate. Recently, a word came to the abbey of an ancient relic of Serenata that had been stolen by bandits while being taken to an archive. Quir sees this as her chance to prove her devotion, so she graciously volunteered to begin a pilgrimage, track down the artifact, and bring those responsible to justice. You mentioned the name of a god, which I have not heard before. Tell me about Serenita. She is from the Forgotten Realms, and she is the patron deity of the Aarakocra, seen as a female Aarakocra with silver skin and pink gold feathers. She loves music and sometimes would appear in her avatar form just to listen to bard. But, you know, another question came up for me is that barbarians as a class are kind of defined by rage. And I know that some people take that in a different direction, and I fully support that. But how does rage work for Quir? She kind of focuses on the memory of her brother. She felt that she could have done more, even though she was so young. I think she also has a little bit of resentment for her grandfather for not stepping up and doing more to repel the, the plague, causing their home to, uh, to fall into shambles. Mm -hmm. I think that she just kind of latches onto that. But through Serenita, she's trying to use that rage for good, to focus it in a direction where it's not destructive for destruction's sake, but destructive for cause. And like I said, she's using it to uh, recover lost artifacts, to port her, her pantheon and religion. Guided rage is better than wild rage. Right, right. I feel like a lot of times the story of a barbarian involves learning ways to channel that anger. Obviously, too much anger is unhealthy. And a lot of characters are going to start off with some sort of emotional or, or personal problem that they need to overcome. And so I think that happens a lot with barbarians. Do you think that that's the arc that you see for Quir? I can see her probably multiclassing into Paladin at some point and, uh, and really taking that more as a direction in her life mm -hmm. because of her devotion to Ekeg, the Aarakocra Paladin. So she's kind of like trying to follow in their footsteps. So I think that would be character development. Right now, she's, she's got this rage, so she, she identifies as a barbarian, but her goal is to start doing something more positive with that rage through the teachings of uh, Serenita and to try to be more of a holy vessel rather than just a engine of destruction. You haven't had a chance to play Quir yet. Uh, why are you excited to play them? I'm excited to play all my characters, but for her, it feels like just her appearance is fun. The pun is fun. I make all my characters very believable. I think a lot of people don't bother with backstory. They Like, for instance, they play a barbarian just because they know they can rage and get the strength bonus. But again, like you said, 
Why are you raging? Where is that rage coming from? I have an idea of playing. I know I'm going off here, but I have an idea of playing a barbarian who is actually more of a used car salesman type of attitude. <laughs> His rage comes off more as kind of a pompous incredulity rather than it's like, oh, well, you know, we're going to have to get the undercoat on that. And his rage comes off more as a cutting sarcasm than dark, evil, you know, yelling and screaming. Right, right. Interesting. <laughs> but with her, I just would love to see her story develop. I'd like to see a DM. I always, whenever I write my, my backstories, I try to leave things very vague. Notice I didn't name the town she's from. I didn't name the town they ended up in. I didn't name her family members. Also, did her grandfather survive the plague or not? Right, is he right. living as a hermit up in that town now, or was he kicked out by somebody? So I'd like to see a DM take what I've given, take the, the, the Play-Doh and mold something for me and see where it goes. So I'd just be excited to see what somebody could do with her, her backstory for my sake. What kind of campaign do you think would be well suited for this character? Well, I mean, she'd definitely do well in Icewind Dale, I think for sure. But I wouldn't mind seeing her doing a, a Waterdeep campaign really bird out of her native environment trying to make it in the city where she you know she barely understands the concept of doors <laughs> yeah what do you think was her hometown predominantly aracocra i i think yes predominantly aracocra a mix of other races like dwarves and such as well she's familiar with other races because again they did move south to another town so she's she's familiar with other races I've always found it interesting to imagine how a town built by Aarakocra would be different. So you mentioned like doors, for example. How do you think that she would adjust to living in places that aren't predominantly Aarakocra? Or how do you think she adjusted when they moved south? Well, I think that a typical Aarakocra doorway would be wider than a regular doorway. So I think right away she ha would have to get very used to tucking her feathers in a bit tighter, maybe even wearing some type of a binder, a quick release binder to kind of hold her feathers in. So I could see it being kind of a situation where her feathers are pinned back so tightly, they can't really tell she has wings until she just flexes a certain way and poof, out they come. Because she was having trouble tucking them in for the smaller doorways of typical races. I think that there would be a lot of perching Instead of sitting in a chair, I think she would be much more just like with her claws, like right on the edge of the chair, like in her knees up. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that, that I think would lean into her birdness, but also her puffinness, which they enjoy rock climbing and they're very social creatures. So I think she would try to form a very close knit group of friends and cuddle puddle. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> You built a level one character, so there's probably not a lot of special features at this point. But does your character have any unusual stats or build or anything like that? Not really. She's focused on survival, religion, insight, and athletics. Her dump stat is actually wisdom, average intelligence, high strength and dexterity, and a decent charisma. But yeah, no, no, no specific special abilities quite yet. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Some people take a very kind of mechanical approach when they're building a character. I think some people even start with wanting to exploit a particular mechanic, like making the fastest character possible. Not my personal approach. I'm kind of curious how you approach building the actual mechanics of the character. I go with just what feels right. I try not to min-max. But if you're playing a barbarian, you're going to want to put your two highest abilities into. I usually use the standard array. You want to drop into strength and dexterity. You don't make a cleric and then give them an, an eight wisdom. Yeah, you could. That would be fun. I, I recently made a character and I, we rolled for stats and I ended up with a four as Oof. one of my stats. Right. And it was like, oh, my God. And I, I put it into his constitution. He was a, did I go with bard? Yeah, I did go with bard, bagpipes, but I gave him a low constitution and asthma. And ironically, it's like, wait a minute, he's got asthma, but he plays the bagpipes. And I was like, he's like a person who stutters, who can still sing. Mm -hmm. He is trained. He knows how to use his breath control specifically for the bagpipes, but still has to use his inhaler uh, from time to time when dealing with talking to the mayor and trying to express himself. I would like to ask you an in-character question. If you could go back and change one decision you made in the past, what would you change? If I could change one thing about my life, I'd go back and hold my brother much closer. I think I could have saved him if I'd taken him away sooner. If I hadn't trusted my father and my mother, 
I was just a child then, but still, I miss him so much, and I'd do anything to have him back. That's sweet. I like that. Thank you so much for bringing Cora to the table and sharing your methods and your approach to building character. It's really great to talk to you. I am going to now give you a chance to tell us about your deck, better backstories, and anything else you want to tell the listeners so that they can find you and follow you. Well, thank you so much, Star. This has been wonderful. It's such a great concept that you've created here, you know, giving people the opportunity to talk about the characters that, you know, they may or may never get the opportunity to play. So thank you for that. I am the creator of Better Backstories. Again, I make a lot of characters and I wanted to make them all unique. And there are several books out there where they give you inspiration on backstory elements, but they're very cumbersome. It was like rolling on a chart, going to page six, rolling on another chart, going to page 23. And it was just too much. And I wanted something that was quick and portable. So I designed these cards, 80 cards. They are just meant to inspire you and kickstart your imagination. I created the cards. I wanted to print them. So I ran a Kickstarter. I asked for $3,000 and I made $25,000. Oh, wow. Backers from all over the world, www.betterbackstories.com. And that will link you to my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter accounts where I regularly post examples of better backstories, uh, videos on how I use better backstories, which I also do on Twitter. On Twitter, I do a thing called ask me what's your backstory. And if you go to one of my videos and you type in what's my backstory, I will create you a one minute backstory using five cards from the deck and post it on TikTok for you and anyone else to use as inspiration. My TikTok is all that jazz one Z 22. And if you go there, you can find various examples of better backstories and uh, one minute backstories or even request one for yourself cool great if you are interested in sharing your character on the podcast go ahead and email me at characterswithoutstories at gmail.com you can go to characterswithoutstories.com and listen to previous episodes I would really appreciate it if you can like this episode, if you can subscribe to the podcast, if you can review it, if you're on Apple Podcasts, every little bit counts. Thank you so much for listening today and have a great day.